It's like donating your body to science while you're still alive. <laughs> you guys are great. You're cheering me up. I just had some dental work done. Yeah, and I had it done at the dental school. Has anyone ever had this done? Any other poor people out there? It's no fun, right? This is when you go to the dental school and you let students work on you for a discount. It's like donating your body to science while you're still alive. <laughs> I feel good about it. I like to do stuff like that. Like I'm an organ donor. I'm a, did you guys check the organ donor box on your card? A few of you. Everybody should do it. That's your, that might be your last chance to do something good. <laughs> and you're not going to take it with you, right? Just give it away. That's, that's like recycling. <laughs> they can take anything. Heart, uh, kidneys, and eyeball. You know what they can take now? They just transplanted a whole face onto somebody else's face that got messed up. Isn't that weird? They can take your face. I hope they don't take my face and give it to somebody local. That will be weird for my friends and family. <laughs> Didn't Tim die? No, I saw him at the Chipotle. He's a lot shorter. He's shorter than he was. And he's the sheriff. I want to, uh, I like to see a jazz game while I'm here. Maybe someone give me some jazz tickets. Anybody uh, basketball fans out there? You know, I like professional basketball because those athletes are the least in contact with reality. <laughs> I like when a seven-foot-tall player dunks the basketball. No one's guarding him. He starts celebrating like he did something special. <laughs> you are seven-foot-tall, sir. That's the same skill level as me flushing a toilet. <laughs> I mean, I feel good about a nice flush, but I walk away, keep it cool. <laughs> I let my stats speak for themselves. I think I had another Utah experience. I went into the Chipotle, and there's a guy in there, not a cop, just a regular guy, and he's got his, he's holstered his gun right here. I mean, I, never, I don't see that very often. I, you know, my Chipotle at home, we don't have a sheriff. <laughs> so, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's, it's weird, open carry is a weird thing. I feel sorry for open carry gun owners, to be honest, because no one will ever throw you a surprise party. <laughs> I grew up in Virginia. I came from Virginia today. Virginians? Are you Virginians? Oh, oh, some other rednecks up there. I go visit my parents. They live in a small town now. Small towns uh, make me uncomfortable because I've been, I lived in New York City for a long time. And anybody from a small town, real small town? Yeah. How many people? Yell it out. We didn't have a stoplight. Oh, no stoplight? That's how you count your people? Thanks for an answering a question I did not ask. <laughs> Could have just said you don't know the population of the town. Can you count them in your head right now? Uncle Billy, Aunt, Aunt Betsy. You got no stoplight at all. How many people can you? 2,000, that's a medium small town. Anybody beat it? How many people? 700, look at that. That's not even a town. That's where your grandpa's truck broke down. Is that your man right there? You guys didn't meet in that town, did you? <laughs> you don't want to cross any wires, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Small towns are, have different social rules. And I have big city habits, so I can't, when I go visit my parents, I get in trouble. Because, you know, you can't get road rage in a small town, for instance. You ever try that and you're, you're an idiot! Mrs. Robertson. <laughs> Don't tell my mom, okay? She's in the car with you. Hey, mom! <laughs> See you guys at the potluck. <laughs> I come from a long line of rednecks. I'm trying not to be one, but it's hard to fight your gene pool. If I don't cut my hair, it just grows right into a mullet. <laughs> you ever look at your parents, you get scared a little bit? That's coming for you. 
My dad's hairy, so hairy. Some of you guys are hairy. Look at you, lumberjack. <laughs> There's a lot of hair down there, man. That's all right. You grow up fast too, right? That's why you just don't bother shaving. My dad grew up so fast. He didn't have a five o'clock shadow. He grew an 11 a.m. scarf. Like, oh, what's wrong with your neck? It's covered in hair, head to toe. All you can see are his eyes poking out. And he was the underwear dad. Anyone have that dad? You know, when you wear that kid's house, his dad was always in his underwear. I can't bring my friends inside. My dad's walking around at 3 p.m. in his cowboy boots and the oldest pair of tidy whities on the earth. They are neither tight nor white anymore. They are Lucy Brownies now. Some of you have your Lucy Brownies on right now. It's Friday and you miscalculated. Only time he got dressed was to go hunting, my dad. He'd hunt in that outfit if they let him. Hunters, you guys are out there, right? Utah, you guys hunt? What do you hunt there, deer? Deer hunters? Yeah, where are you at? Hunters, come on now. Back there, what, oh, here, man. You hunt deer? Yeah. And how do you do it? You got a gun or a car, how do you do it? <laughs> bow and arrow. Bo oh, bow and arrow, oh, you're serious about it. Deer hunters are crazy. When you hunt, kill a deer, you gotta hang it upside down, right? Yeah. Where do you do yours? Tree branch, right? I actually just a tree. A tree, usually. My dad used to do it from the swing set. <laughs> we thought it was a new accessory when we first saw that then. Dad got us a Bambi swing. <laughs> I think he put it up wrong. <laughs> You get all dressed up in camo, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. Gun. No gun, you got a bow and arrow, but you, you ever put that doe pee on yourself? Once, you or twice. Once or twice. You guys know hunters do this, right? You can buy doe urine at the Walmart, a little jar of it. Unless you go to Costco, then you buy a big boss of Pepsi. <laughs> it's cheaper in bulk. Put it on your boots, right? A little behind each ear. They do it to camouflage the scent. Deer can't smell you, can't see you, can't hear you. How is that fair? You hunt all you want, but do not call it a sport. In a sport, there's defense. Add some defense for the deer, let me go out. I will hunt the hunters while they're hunting the deer. I douse myself in Miller Lite. Mount you on my wall, buddy. You look good up there. <laughs> Big scary man, my daddy used to beat us. Did you guys get the beatings? Spanking, they call it, to get away with it. <laughs> we were afraid of my dad. When he turned around in the car and said, shut up, don't make me come back there and separate you. I knew he was serious. I was back there by myself. <laughs> My dad had a bad temper. Luckily, he found an outlet for his anger as my little league baseball coach. <laughs> Anyone have this experience in life, the coach? When your dad is the coach, you get to play positions you were highly unqualified to play. <laughs> and if I made a mistake in the game, I get a speech in the car. You ever get that speech? What is wrong with you, boy? What do you want to be in life, a winner or a loser? Um, I'm five, Dad. Uh, I think I just peed on myself because you startled me. You want to use that for hunting? I don't blame my dad. I needed some correction. I was a hyper kid. We didn't have any uh, Ritalin. We had sugar. We didn't have ADHD either. Our, our diagnosis was Eurospaz. We got it on the bus on the way to school. 
I grew up before sugar was bad for you. Anybody remember those days? <laughs> Bowl of sugar would just sit right on the counter like a condiment next to ketchup. <laughs> just sitting there. You could use it on whatever you wanted. What is that, broccoli? Give me sugar. <laughs> Give it. Now it's frosted broccoli. <laughs> Still stinks. I was hyped up. My report cards came back with that big X in the self-control box. Timmy's running wild. What's the matter, honey? I don't know, Mom. How about these seven bowls of Count Chocula today before I went to school? <laughs> and the giant glass of Tang that I washed it down with. I was jacked up for school, Mom, thank you. That's why I was popular. Here comes Timmy, he'll smash his head into something. He's got no control of himself. I go to the 7-Eleven after school to keep my high going. Tootsie Rolls, Fireballs, now laters, that dumb necklace. <laughs> Big ring pop, remember that thing? Little necklace and a ring on. Ten-year-old transvestite walking around the neighborhood. I didn't care. I just wanted the sugar. That's what my favorite candy was just sugar in a bag. Fun dip. They still make that candy. That's not even, they don't even bother to make candy. They just pour sugar in bags and give it to you. And give you two dipping sticks that are also made out of sugar. That's a jackpot. I ate the whole thing right outside the store. <laughs> I made a crackhead look like the Dalai Lama after that. I was passing cars on my big wheel on the way home. <laughs> Riding my big wood of Florida. When I get back, I'm gonna dig a pool. <laughs> my mom didn't know any better. She did, a, she did a good job. Being a mom is a hard job, right moms? Oh, God bless you. You gotta take care of this little baby. I went to the Cold Stone Creamery and there was a woman having ice cream and breastfeeding her baby. Now, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I think that's beautiful. To be there for that kid's first milkshake. I was so moving to me. Well, I don't know how it works. She's having some ice cream. Hits having a milkshake. I don't, I don't have any kids. That is very environmentally friendly to have no children. Who has the kids? Who, who's doing? Oh, kids. Kids. How many kids? Two kids? Oh, that's good, sir. Did you know that? Kids, uh, two, two is good. You gotta have a backup. <laughs> well, I don't have any kids, but I know the kids are like cats. So There's a good chance you get a crazy one. <laughs> Both of you know which one it is. Now, come on now. <laughs> I won't make you say. I don't have any kids. I like sleeping. <laughs> People show me pictures of their kids. I show them pictures of places I sleep. Just to rub it in. That's your son? That's my Tempur-Pedic mattress. Look at him. <laughs> I sleep 10 hours in a row sometimes. <laughs> kids are funny, though. My, my friend has a little kid, a little two-year-old. How old are your kids? Any ideas, sir? <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, three and one. Oh, smelly house. <laughs> Three-year-old is potty trained? Oh, he went through that. My friends are going through that right now. He, he's potty training his kid, and he has weird things in his house. i never seen I went to visit, and I needed to use the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom, and I, and I put the toilet seat down, but there was another tiny toilet seat <laughs> on top of that toilet seat. Did you guys have that thing? I didn't know. I had never seen it. I didn't know it was for a toddler. I thought it was just for advanced crapping or something. <laughs> I was like, I accept your challenge, tiny toilet seat. I will try to poop in this tiny hole. I came out, I was like, I conquered that level. Now give me the next one. I will be going in a Snapple bottle before I'm finished. I like kids. After they learn where to poop, then they become fun. Three is fun, right? Three, three to five is fun, because they, they learn how to talk, but they don't learn what not to say. 
They say whatever they want, and they say weird stuff sometimes. I was on a bus one time. We pulled into a bus stop. This little three-year-old girl hops up on the seat next to me, looks out the window, and she goes, what world is this? <laughs> How could a three-year-old voice my existential crisis so clearly? <laughs> exactly, three-year-old. I've been wondering that my whole adult life, <laughs> except in a more terrified way. Show me the way, tiny Zen master. I'm a comedian, this is a good job. I also, I'm also a filmmaker, sort of an amateur filmmaker. I'm filming a horror movie right now. I'm shooting it exclusively using the backup camera in my Subaru. <laughs> I shoot mostly in the Walmart parking lot. Those people are on edge and they get scared real easy. I love my backup camera. Do you guys have a backup camera in your car? Some of you guys. I, it spoiled me because now when I get in a rental like I have now, it has no camera in it. I'm like, what? You want me to turn all the way around? What am I, an owl? That camera got me in trouble though a little while ago. I was on a camping trip. On the way to camping trip, the cop pulled me over. I was speeding and the cop comes and takes my license and stuff. And he takes it back to the car. And he was taking a long time and I couldn't see him because of my camping gear. I want to see what was going on back there. So I turned my car on, put the car in reverse so I could see the backup camera. Not a good move. <laughs> Between my backup camera and his front-facing camera, we got good footage of my beating. <laughs> I drive a Subaru Outback now. That's cool. This is the first time I've been so high off the road. I usually drive tiny cars because I like gas mileage. I drove a Mini Cooper. That's my last car. It's cool, right? I test drove a smart car before I got the Mini Cooper. It was the scariest test drive of my whole life. <laughs> Have you guys ever ridden in a smart car? No. I got in the driver's seat and without leaning, I could adjust the passenger side mirror. I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> me, 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 me. That's a real pitch of the horn in there. You ever notice how they match the horn to your car size? That's humiliating. You gotta have a good horn, because your horn is for what? Emergency? No, it's for anger. It's for anger, and your horn is an implicit threat to the other drivers. And the longer and deeper your horn, the more of a threat it feels like, right? I will kill you. Me. I'm pretty angry at you. You're a bad person. <laughs> My favorite horn is a, a, an 18-wheeler horn. I love it when they honk it. Don't you love it? Because there's no anger in that. That's just very matter of fact. <laughs> Move or die. <laughs> Let me think it over. Driving that smart car was so scary because you got to share the road with other cars. It's like a Chihuahua and a Great Dane and the same. We pull up a stoplight, someone pulls up next to you, you just see a tire, like a tire. That's us in the hubcap, we're not gonna make it. This guy pulls up next to us. He's one of these guys who put his house speakers in his car. Do you have those guys here? He's got like 18 speakers in his vehicle and he turned his bass up so high that it could restart my heart. That's always a good... <laughs> The whole smart car started vibrating. And then we scooted right into oncoming traffic. It was a terrible accident. Our airbag went off though. Reinflated the car to its original size. There is no airbag in that car. There is a body bag in a glove compartment. I've been in an airbag accident, anyone else? I mean, I was in a car, I wasn't just walking down the street with an airbag. <laughs> a super cautious pedestrian. I was in an accident, the airbag came out. Anyone ever had the airbag deploy, anyone? Yeah, buddy, back there? What'd you hit? Yell it out. Head on collision. Oh, you hit a head on collision? Oh, that's the, uh, huh? you were driving on the wrong side? No. Everything okay? You got it, airbag came out? Do you remember it or did you knock you out? 
It hurts, doesn't it? Doesn't feel like there's air in the back? <laughs> it's poorly named. It hits you right in the face and you don't, you don't see it come out. It comes out faster than the human eye can even detect and that's why it's so weird. You're in the accident, your face hurts. <laughs> For a second, I thought the other guy had gotten out of his car, hit me in the face, <laughs> got back in his car but left a balloon behind because he felt bad about it. I think I hit a clown. I hit a remorseful clown. Airbags come out at 300 miles an hour. Did you know that? I hit the car in front of me going 10. I would have rather ran my face into the steering wheel going 10. Now something is coming out of the steering wheel at 300? What if I was eating something? <laughs> a 300 mile an hour taco would kill you. That would kill you. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Ow. OnStar. OnStar. <laughs> Have an unusual problem. There's a taco on my neck and it burns. I put hot sauce on it. <laughs> Should have bought the burrito. Will you remotely unlock my door? <laughs> this job, I drive a lot for this job. I don't, I don't love that part of it. And I fly a lot, which I also don't like. I'm a nervous flyer. Anybody else willing to admit it? I get nervous because the plane, I don't want to go down like that. I wish I could take a parachute on as my carry-on. Uh, that would look suspicious going through airport security. <laughs> it's for a precaution, sir. I would jump out if something happened. If I survived and everyone else died, I would be famous. But if I died and everyone else survived, I'd be an idiot. <laughs> I'd be on the news that night. A frightened man jumped from a 737 today and was sucked into the starboard engine. The plane was only taxiing for takeoff at the time. <laughs> what really makes me nervous is the pilot. That's a person up there flying the plane. People are flawed. They come into work just like we go to work. They get tired, hungry, angry. When you're tired and hungry, how do you drive? Don't tell me the pilot isn't tempted to drive the plane like that some days, right? Uh, attention passengers. We're gonna be a little late taking off. Some other pilot just cut me off on the runway. As <laughs> Soon as we're airborne, I'm gonna cut that moron off. <laughs> I'd appreciate you giving him the finger as we go by. <laughs> That'd be more coming from 300 people. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll have some more water. When I go on vacation, since I travel so much, I like to camp. That's my idea of a vacation. Are there campers out there? You guys camp? Yeah. Now, real campers, not, not drive your house to the campsite, okay? That is cheating. <laughs> I camped at a campsite not too long ago. Did you know there's a checkout time at the campsite? That's weird. The ranger came by in the morning. He's like, it's time to leave. I'm like, am I being kicked out of the outside? <laughs> Where am I supposed to go, ranger? I am already outdoors. <laughs> I camped in Colorado last month. There were, there were bears around. The ranger's like, make sure you use the bear box for your food. You know what a bear box is? If you don't know, it's a big metal box at the campsite. You put your food inside and lock it up so your food is safe. And then you go to sleep in a tent. <laughs> uh, I don't know who designed that system. I went to sleep in the bear box. I left my food in the tent for the bear. Please, bear, enjoy these grapes and power bars. If you see a bear, you're not supposed to run. Did you know that? What are you supposed to do? Anybody? Play dead. People always say that, though, and then actual dead right after that. I think you're supposed to make yourself look bigger. Scream pots and pans and, and yell at it and wave your arms and then uh, crap your pants, crap your pants. 
that lets the bear know that you will not be delicious. <laughs> Sends a strong message. I think this human is expired. I'm gonna see what else is on the buffet. <laughs> You guys are fun. This is a fun night, comedy, right? Yeah, it's a good night. It's better than a movie. Yeah. Movies are expensive anyway, right? How much do movies cost here in Provo? 10, everybody's saying something different. $15 right there. I go by myself, that's all I can afford. I went to the movies by myself the other night and I sat down and the whole theater filled in around me and this this big guy sat down next to me. And it makes me a little uncomfortable to sit next to someone I don't know at the theater. Because first of all, you gotta play that game on the armrest. You ever play that little game? <laughs> Usually you work something out, you share it, right? No, he's hogging the whole thing. Both sides right away, like he's the captain of the Enterprise or something. <laughs> he left me nothing except for the cup holder part. So I put my elbow on that anyway. <laughs> Just to let him know I was in the game, man. I waited 20 minutes like that. Finally he moved. I took the whole rest and I jammed my cup in the cup holder. I thought I had one, but he came back with this move. He laid his arm on top of my arm. He's banking on me freaking out and moving my arm, but I didn't, I reversed it on him. I put my hand on his leg. I cleared the whole row out. This is cool. A lot of colleges around here, right? I mean, we're the college students. You guys college students? Oh, so happy. Sorta, what do you mean sorta? You just got kicked out? Long story. Uh, I don't have a lot of time. Maybe after the show you can tell me what happened. College guys, enjoy your college guys. That's a, that's a good time in your life. That's the last time in your life you can get a girlfriend without a job. Enjoy that. When you get out, I'm starting a band, just isn't gonna cut it. <laughs> I just got out of a relationship, involuntarily. <laughs> yeah, I was heartbroken. When you're heartbroken, your friends try to make you feel better. They tell you all the dumb things. Don't worry, Tim, there are more fish in the sea. Yeah, but I'm not a fisherman. <laughs> I get the fish that jump into my boat because they're drunk or bipolar. <laughs> now I'm single again. I gotta try to meet girls. I don't have a very good game, I just stare. <laughs> I was staring at a woman in the store the other day. She was staring right back at me, so I thought, all right, that's probably a man. <laughs> uh. I believe in love, though. I have a little nephew, he's two and a half. He's a little guy. He just learned to say the words, I love you, and he says it to everybody. My sister's like, he doesn't understand what it means. He says it because he thinks he can get something. Oh, I think he understands exactly what it means. <laughs> that kid is a genius. <laughs> Good luck, couples. Single people, are you, anybody single here? Single? Single ladies? Be careful, single girls, all right? You pick poorly. You gotta be careful with the girls. Your selection process is flawed. You pick the cute guys, guys who compliment you, make you giggle. Those aren't the nice guys. Those are the best BSers, okay? And they grow up to become CEOs and presidents and comedians. Now listen, you wanna be a nice guy, girls, I'll tell you. A nice guy will not come up and talk to you at a party, okay? Nice guy's in the corner of the room looking weird and scared. You call him a stalker, you call him a stalker. But I think stalking gets a bad rap. You have a problem with a stalker? I have a solution, start dating the stalker. Now he's no longer stalking you, he's just incredibly attentive and very punctual. You know how sensitive you have to be to cut out individual letters in a newspaper? and arrange them into a loving yet threatening poem. That's a lot, it takes a lot of heart and creativity. Oh, good luck, everybody. You guys married? Oh, how long? Five and a half years. 
oh, cool, that's cool. My parents, they, got married. they, they stayed married a long time, but then they got divorced. 40 years, and then they got a divorce. Can you believe it? Don't worry, I got custody of my mother. I like to get married. I don't want to grow old with someone. I think that's nice. Sometimes I see a lonely older person. That makes me sad. I was in the Barnes & Noble reading. I'm sitting next to this guy. He's like 90. We're both reading. I think he was reading. He might have passed away. I couldn't tell. <laughs> he was sitting real still for a long time. He was alive. This cute college girl went up to him and scared him. She's like, excuse me. You look like my grandpa. I just want to say hi. He's like, you must have a nice grandpa. <laughs> As she walked away, we both checked out her butt. <laughs> I felt like I just got a visit from the ghost of pervert future. <laughs> I, uh, I tell you what, I'm not, I'm gonna handle it differently if I live, if I live to be that old, I'm gonna hit on women my own age. I'm serious, and I'll tell you why. If you literally be the age as a man, women will outnumber you nine to one. I'm gonna be busy, okay? I'm gonna get a tattoo on my arm. It says, hip breaker, right here. I'm gonna have good pickup lines, too. What's up, baby? You look osteo-ferocious tonight, girl. That's it for me, you guys. Thanks so much. You guys are absolutely great. Good night. Thank you so much.